California Fish and Boat Commission. I manage the Cooperative Nursery Program for the Fish and Boat Commission. Uh, we currently have 147 sponsor organizations and 162 cooperative nurseries. The sponsor organization is a sportsman's club, an outdoor interest group, schools, even a federal prison is part of our program. And each one of them have at least one nursery, some have multiple nurseries, which is why we have more, more nurseries than sponsors. Cooperative nursery is different than a state hatchery in that the nursery does not rear their fish from egg to uh, fingerling and then onto an adult. The cooperative nurseries, they receive their fish as fingerling from our state hatcheries and then they raise the fingerlings to an adult size. Uh, it takes a couple of months to do. They usually receive their fish uh, in the spring and in, in early summer, so usually around June, um, some into July. And then they'll raise their fish until March or April the following year and they'll stock them as adults. The financial burden falls onto them to feed the fish, to pay for their own electricity, uh, to run pumps, blower motors, uh, lighting, and those sorts of things. And then it's their responsibility to stock the fish into um, waters that are accessible to the public for angling. Our cooperative nurseries receive uh, fingerling trout from the state hatcheries. They typically are two to four inches in length. Then they raise them to roughly 9 to 12 inches in length to be stocked for angling purposes uh, in the following spring. The amount that the co-ops typically stock is right around 1 million, which adds to the 3.2 million that are already stocked by the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission, which makes up for roughly a quarter of all trout stocks for angling purposes in the state of Pennsylvania. Typically our cooperative nurseries stock their fish by using a small stocking truck that they own. Um, typically they can stock right around 500 fish or so during each stocking and they will get a large group of volunteers together from the club. They'll load the fish onto the truck and they'll take them out to the stream of the lake in which they're going to stock them. We do have some nurseries um, typically up in our, our Lake Erie uh, drainage where they, they raise brown trout and uh, steelhead and they have the ability to essentially pull the screen out at the bottom of the raceway and they can push their fish right out into the stream and they are stocked directly into the stream. But for the vast majority of our nurseries, they do stock them on a stocking truck that, that they own. We do have some nurseries that utilize float stocking. And what they'll do is instead of stocking the fish directly into the stream at one stocking point, they'll take their fish off of their stocking truck, put them into a float, and they'll take them down through a stream, placing a handful of fish at different intervals throughout the stream so that it spreads the stocking out a little bit farther than just putting them in at one stop. Today we will be seeing fingerling trout being loaded onto a Fish and Boat Commission stocking truck which will be delivered to two of our cooperative nurseries for distribution into their nursery uh, where they will raise those fingerling trout to adult sized trout for stocking next spring for angling purposes. What we're seeing here is hatchery personnel pushing the fish up into a crowded area so that they can net them easy. They will net them, they put them up onto a scale, they weigh them, they know how many fish per pound they have in each, in each, uh, in each net full. Then they'll hand them up to the stocking truck driver and she will put them into the, the stocking truck where she has specific tanks designated for each nursery and different species of fish. Once those fish are on there, and loaded, then they're ready to go to the nurseries. We're loading up both brook trout and brown trout, and they roughly are two to four inches in length. The approximate age of these fish is roughly eight to 10 months in age. Here we're seeing the loading of gold rainbow trout fingerling onto the truck. Our goldens are held inside in a round tank since our nurseries get such a few number of gold rainbow trout in comparison to production trout. Um, they're held inside just so they're easier to count, easier to get a hold of. They don't take up as much space outside in the raceways. So here you're seeing fish culturists uh, count out the fish, put them into buckets, so that then the amount is known to the, the culturist on the truck, and she's now going to dump them into, the, into a specific tank for each one of our nurseries. Our nurseries like to get these fish. Um, they're nice to put into the stream. They're, they're easier to see. Um, they're kind of a, a trophy catch uh, per se for some people and they really like to see them. Here you're seeing the loading of rainbow uh, fingerling trout 
for our nurseries. Um, again, just like with our, our brooks and our, our brown trout, um, cultures push up the, the trout into a smaller area so they're easier to net. Again, they know how many fish per pound they have. They'll get a, a poundage in the net, hand them up to the culturist on the truck, and she will put them into specific compartments for delivery to the nursery. During transport, these fish are held on a, on a stocking truck, typically have seven compartments. Uh, the, the stocking trucks are all different. Some have insulated tanks, some don't. Um, the, the water typically is around 50 to 55 degrees, depending on the hatchery in which the trout are loaded from. On each truck, there's an aerator, which circulates water. There's also a backup oxygen system with bottles of oxygen on the, on the truck itself with oxygen socks in each tank so that if the aerator fails or if it's also needed to supplement oxygen, that can be done so that these fish are in the best shape they possibly can be when they get to the uh, cooperative nursery. What we saw here today was the distribution of fingerling trout to the Duncan and Sportsman's Nursery. Uh, Brooks Browns and Rainbows were delivered as well as some, some golden rainbow trout. Uh, they were all evenly distributed um, into different sections of the raceway. The brook trout, brown trout, and rainbow trout along with the golden rainbow trout were mixed in with the rainbows. Uh, these fingerlings will be uh, cared for and raised by the uh, cooperative nursery and stocked in the springtime for angling opportunities. The Duncan and Sportsman's Co-op has been part of the cooperative nursery program for 37 years. The water source for this cooperative nursery is a spring-fed source. As you can see behind me, uh, it's a spring-fed stream that provides good quality water, a cold water temperature, uh, which is ne uh, necessary for sustaining a cooperative nursery that raises trout. This particular water source, which is a spring-fed stream, runs through uh, a wooded area which allows for that water to stay cool uh, until it reaches the nursery to be used uh, to raise trout. All of our nursery setups are different. They're very vast and unique. Some are inside, some are outside. Some are tanks, some are, are raceways, some are earthen ponds. Um, so the offloading of the fish depends on the nursery that the fish are going to. If, if it's possible, our, our uh, hatchery personnel will offload the fish just by putting a tube onto the, or a hose onto the, onto the truck and, and essentially just pulling a, a lever and letting those fish go through the tube into the raceway. Other times they're netted in. Other times they're put into buckets and carried in and put into the raceway or whatever the holding facility, um, or whatever the nursery's holding facility is. The New Bloomfield Sportsman's Association has been part of the cooperative nursery program for 45 years. They typically raise brown trout and rainbow trout along with some golden rainbow trout for angling purposes. The nursery is spring fed, much like the Duncannon Sportsman's Association nursery. It provides a good quality, cold water uh, spring source that allows for the rearing of trout. At this particular nursery, we don't have access to bring a truck in and offload the fish using the hose that we did at Duncannon. So here we have to use buckets where we'll load the buckets up with the fish, bring them in, and place them where they need to go. 
What you saw today was only part of what the Cooperative Nursery Unit does. We also provide technical guidance and assistance to all of our nurseries at any point in time throughout the year. We also provide assistance when fish become sick with diseases and in the aiding and treatment of those diseases. This allows for the fish to be healthy and to be stocked at a, an appropriate size and health. We also provide a biennial seminar series where we meet with all of our nursery members and provide them with numerous presentations and information that they can use and bring back to their nurseries. We also conduct biannual nursery inspections in the fall and in the spring to measure the fish, to take water quality analysis such as temperature, dissolved oxygen, and pH to ensure that the water quality is appropriate for the raising of the trout. Some of our nurseries will stock outside of trout season. They'll stock either in the fall or the winter uh, to help with some angling opportunities in those times of year. We also have some nurseries, our warm water nurseries, that will raise musky, tiger musky, and purebreds, as well as channel catfish, and they will stock those outside of, of trout season, obviously, uh, in preparation for those seasons. We have quite a few nurseries that um, have been with the, the program for several decades. Um, we have quite a few over 50 years, some in the six year range. We have one that is an original member of the uh, cooperative nursery program from the U.S. Bureau of Fisheries back in 1932, and that's the Winver Sportsman. They are our longest running uh, cooperative nursery that we have.